Today's message comes from Warren Wearsby, back to the Bible's second on-air Bible teacher. It's a joy to share with you this encore series called Pictures of the Word. So let's return to Warren as he talks about the cleansing power of God's Word. Now the church today has spots and wrinkles and blemishes, and Jesus in his love wants to cleanse all of that and make us a glorious church, a beautiful bride for his glory and for his pleasure. You see, in the Old Testament, when the priest was defiled, he was separated from God. Exodus chapter 30, if he didn't wash at the laver, keep his hands and feet clean, it was a matter of life or death. He couldn't work in the tabernacle and officiate at the altar. In the New Testament, the Lord Jesus says, now if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me, John chapter 13. If I don't wash your feet, if I don't keep you clean, you can't fellowship with me. Sin is defilement. Now, if the Word of God is water, then there's a second fact, namely, that salvation is like taking a bath. Now, this is stated definitely in John chapter 13. Peter had washed the disciples' feet, and he said in verse 8, If I do not wash you, you have no part, no fellowship with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He said, just wash me all over. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. Now, in the Greek language, the word bathed, luo, means to wash all over. That's salvation. In verses 5 and 6 of John 13, as well as in verse 8, and verse 12 and verse 14, when he talks about washing, that's a different word altogether. It's the Greek word nipto, which simply means to wash a part of the body. So Jesus is saying, when you were saved, you were washed all over. But now as you walk through the world, your feet get dirty, and therefore you need some cleansing. When we confess our sins to the Lord, he cleanses us. Paul wrote the same thing in Titus 3.5. Being saved is like taking a bath all over, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is not baptism. The word for washing here is that same word. It has to do with washing all over. It's the Greek word that comes from luo, which means to bathe all over, lutron, to wash all over. We aren't saved by baptism. We're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ washing us and the water of the word of God washing us. It may be symbolized in baptism, but it's not caused by baptism. We're not saved by works of righteousness. We're saved by the working of the Holy Spirit of God. I want to ask you, have you been bathed all over? Have you allowed God to wash you all over? Now, the most beautiful picture of this, of course, is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul is dealing with the problems in Corinth. And he says in verse 9 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. In other words, don't let anybody fool you with their theology, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. That's quite a crowd to build a church out of. He says, you people in Corinth used to be fornicators and idolaters and homosexuals and thieves and so forth. Such were some of you. How did they change? But you were washed. You were sanctified, set apart. You were justified, declared righteous in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, just as in the Old Testament, the priests were washed all over, and then they entered into their ministry. So it is with the believer. Sin is like defilement. Salvation is like a bath. Exodus 29, 4. God said, And Aaron and his sons you shall bring to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and you shall wash them with water. They did not 
have a washing every day. They were washed once, but all during the day they went to the laver and washed their hands and washed their feet to make sure that they were clean before the Lord. Well, when you were saved through faith in Jesus Christ, you were washed all over. You don't have to be washed again and again. You simply come to the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all sin, and come to the Word of God, which leads us to our third truth. Sin is like defilement. Salvation is like a bath. And sanctification is like regular washing during the day. This is what Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 5, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, the church, with the washing of water by the Word. Now, the Word of God is like water. It has the power to cleanse the mind and the heart and the will. When I confess my sin, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin, and the record is clear. But my mind needs to be cleansed. My heart needs to be cleansed. My will needs to be washed. Psalm 119, verse 9 asks a question. How can a young man cleanse his way? And it answers the question, by taking heed according to your word. How do you do that? Verse 11, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. We heed the word by hiding the word. I can't explain it. It's a miracle of God's grace. But when I read the word of God, the Holy Spirit of God takes this water of the word and washes my mind, washes my heart cleanses the inner person. Just as the outer person needs cleansing, so the inner person needs cleansing. And you know, if you don't wash properly, you get sick. This is why many believers are spiritually sick today. They've gotten some disease germs in their system. They haven't kept their hands clean. This is why their walk is not what it ought to be. They haven't kept their feet clean. There needs to be that washing of water by the word, By the way, that's one reason why God exhorts us to fellowship in the local church. Because as we worship the Lord collectively together, there is a cleansing process that goes on. I like what is written in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near, draw near to the Lord, with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. It's the Old Testament priesthood picture. Just as the priest was washed, just as he had to be cleansed, just as they sprinkled that water to take away ceremonial defilement, so when we come to the Lord, we come through his word, and that word cleanses us. I think that Paul's admonition in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 is very applicable to us today. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, what promises? I will be a father to you. I will take you as my sons and daughters. We will fellowship together. Having, therefore, these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I want to recommend that you spend time every day in the Word of God. Memorize parts of the Word of God. Let the Word of God flow through your inner being, just like the river flows. I don't know if you've noticed, but a river picks up a lot of debris and carries it down and deposits it. And the Word of God is this way. There is a cleansing power to the Word of God. Sin is like defilement. Whenever we sin, We defile our minds, our hearts, our wills. The inner person gets dirty. Sin is like defilement. Salvation is like taking a bath. You're washed all over, and God says you are set apart. Sanctification is like the regular cleansing, the regular washing of the hands and the feet that we might walk with the Lord. Oh, let's be clean Christians to the glory of God. Thanks for joining us for Back to the Bible. When you're in the middle of the daily grind, wouldn't it be nice to have a reminder of God's presence, of his promises to you and his word? Well, that's what you get with Go Tandem. 
GoTandem is a mobile app that walks with you throughout your day, bringing customized Bible content to your smartphone or email. I said customized because once you download the free GoTandem app, you'll take a short survey about your spiritual needs, and that determines the content you receive. Plus, you get to choose when you want your messages to arrive, up to 12 different times a day. Whatever you need to focus on, from overcoming temptation, to building healthy relationships, or even having hope during uncertain times. GoTandem can help by bringing God's Word into your life throughout your day, every day. So download GoTandem to your smartphone today. Just look for GoTandem. That's Go, T-A-N-D-E-M. Have you ever been afraid? Listen to these words from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Tomorrow on Back to the Bible. We must use the sword by faith. That means reading the Word of God, believing the Word of God, learning the Word of God, memorizing the Word of God, and then using this blessed sword of the Spirit and the power of God to be victors. Warren Wearsby is back with the next message from his Pictures of the Word series. And from it, you'll learn how to be a victor, not a victim in your spiritual life. So be sure to join us again. That's tomorrow, right here on Back to the Bible. Thank you.